Continuous installation is being adopted as a code requirement in many states, or has already been adopted in states like Washington, but what exactly does it mean and how will it impact your future projects? In this video, we're talking all about continuous installation and the code language, various strategies to achieve continuous installation, and some important considerations when it comes to moisture management in these assemblies. Let's get into it. So, what exactly is continuous insulation? Well, this is the code definition that's been adopted by the International Residential Code and the International Building Code. An insulating material that's continuous across all structural members without thermal bridges other than fasteners and service openings. It is installed on the interior or exterior or is integral to any opaque surface of the building envelope. So, this is a pretty broad definition, considering that the only requirement for continuous insulation is that the insulation is just continuous, whether that's on the exterior or on the interior or within the actual wall assembly. However, depending on where we are building and what materials we're building with, this broad definition can actually cause some problems if we aren't careful about how we integrate this continuous insulation. Also, notice that continuous insulation doesn't necessarily mean rigid insulation. We'll talk more about what this means in terms of achieving continuous insulation. So how did we get here, and why are we starting to see continuous insulation requirements being implemented across the country? The primary reason is energy efficiency. We can get a lot of heat transfer through thermally conductive components. If we provide a thermal break between the conductive component and the source of heat, we can substantially reduce the amount of heat loss or heat gain. Now, we need to understand that when we reduce heat flow, we also impact the drying potential of these assemblies, which is why if we aren't careful about how we provide this thermal break, we can run into some problems like condensation, mold, and even rot in very severe cases. Therefore, the best place to locate this continuous insulation is on the exterior of the wall assembly, in front of the WRB, in the form of rigid insulation. But why is that? When we locate the continuous insulation on the exterior, we are actually warming up the condensing surface of the sheathing and the studs by keeping them closer to interior conditions and reducing the number of condensation hours. If we located that rigid insulation on the interior in front of the studs, the cavity would be kept colder, and depending on the rigid insulation product that we use, we could inhibit inward drying. Wood is also hygroscopic, and we will see an increase in moisture content with increases in relative humidity. If the cavity is kept warmer, relative humidity will most likely be lower, and therefore the moisture content in the framing will be kept lower. So continuous insulation, when located on the exterior, can actually help to improve long-term durability. Now, you can also achieve continuous insulation requirements by using a sheathing material that's bonded to some rigid insulation, and we're seeing more and more of this with products like Zip-R or LP NovaCore, and so these are products where the insulation is bonded to the backside of a coated sheathing, meaning that the continuous insulation is located interstitially within the wall assembly. This satisfies continuous insulation requirements and can help to reduce the risk of condensation. However, we avoid these products in very cold climates since the interior panel panel joints are difficult to make airtight, and we can end up with moisture accumulation at the exterior panel seams. We've actually observed this with SIPs or structural insulated panels. What if you want to avoid rigid insulation? You can build a double wall to achieve your continuous insulation requirements, but you have to nail the water management and air sealing details. Remember, the more insulation that you stuff interstitially, the cavity will remain colder, and if condensation forms, it'll have a very difficult time drying out. Our preferred double wall assembly features 2x4 framing with a gap between the exterior and interior walls with the interior framed wall staggered, dense pack blown in cellulose to fill in the cavity, plywood or gypsum sheathing, a fully adhered or fluid applied WRB that's highly vapor permeable, furring strips for a drained and ventilated gap behind the cladding, and a taped smart vapor retarder membrane on the interior for our condensation control. Now, there are plenty of other building methods and strategies that allow for continuous insulation, such as structural insulated panels, insulated concrete forms, insulated precast concrete, and many other products. And while they all have the benefit of providing a means of continuous insulation, they all have their own limitations. This is a problem a lot of contractors, builders, and design professionals face as they try to implement these new code requirements. In 2024, we attended a conference that was held by the Energy Trust of Oregon intended to incentivize home builders and contractors to adopt these new building practices as soon as possible since the codes are changing. And when the speakers were pressed about how to implement these strategies, there was silence and the response was basically, figure it out and good luck. 
As building envelope consultants who work nationally, we do this every day and work one-on-one -on -one with clients, design professionals, and builders to implement forms of continuous insulation, not for the energy efficiency, but for the condensation control benefits and the moisture safety. But the fact is that these concepts are still new to a lot of professionals in the industry, so we figured that we could help. We developed this course specifically to help you navigate these new building envelope requirements for continuous insulation outlined by the International Residential Code and International Building Code and understand how to implement continuous insulation successfully in your projects for a wide range of different wall assemblies and roof assemblies without compromising long-term durability and moisture safety. Not only will we talk about the different strategies and assemblies that can be used to successfully achieve the continuous insulation requirements, but we'll talk about the actual construction details, the material specifications, and other technical aspects that you need to know before you start your project, as well as how these strategies and approaches differ depending on the climate that you're building in, so that you can become the expert that your clients and your team need you to be, without the guesswork and without the risk. Sign up for our free training below, which is taken directly from our course, and get 15% off at checkout. No commitment is necessary at all, we just ask for an email. We look forward to having you in our course, and until then, good luck with your projects. Cheers.